This is the DIY motion simulator I built to fly RC planes. Using telemetry from the plane, it replicates the real movements that the aircraft makes, and it even allows you to control it using realistic flight controls. Combining this with FPV makes for a really immersive experience. Bro! <laughs> Dude, you're like a fighter pilot, bro! I feel like a fighter pilot! <laughs> That's so wild! Oh my god! I am so immersed! <laughs> Dude, this is nuts! And sometimes it's so immersive, it's actually a little terrifying. Hey, oh, there bro. you are! Ah! Oh. Ah! When we were going straight down, I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Dude! Oh my god! Dude, I was going in, I was good, and then we just smiled, and it, I, my mouth hurts! Oh my god! Over the last few years, I have fallen in love with flying RC planes. Building a plane and seeing it fly for the first time is so rewarding. But as a pilot, I still feel a little disconnected from the aircraft. So my plan is to solve this with engineering. By taking the telemetry data from the plane in the air, I should be able to make an RC pilot feel like they're actually in the cockpit by just simulating the movements that the aircraft makes. In this video, I'm gonna build and test this motion sim, as well as take it to Flight Fest, which is one of the largest RC events in the world to see what other people think. I gotta turn a bunch of plywood into a DIY motion simulator for an RC plane. And I gotta do it all in like five weeks. Flight Fest is like next month. I'm so screwed. <laughs> to start, I broke down some plywood on my CNC router. This chair is made up of two sections, the base and then the upper chair thing. The base is actually a pretty complex shape, so it was very helpful to have everything CNC cut and pre-drilled. There's also no reason that this base should need to come apart, so everything gets assembled with plenty of glue. After the base is assembled, I mounted the actuators. These are some beefy NEMA 23 closed loop stepper motors, and then they're mounted to a right angle 10 to one gearbox. This combination should give me almost 30 Newton meters of torque. To turn this torque into actual movement of the chair, I'm gonna use this control horn, which is pretty similar to what you'd see on a servo, except this one's made out of 3 8 aluminum. This was also cut in my CNC router, and I made sure to add a couple extra holes where the linkage could be attached to make everything adjustable. The linkage is made up of some threaded rods and heim joints. This connects the actuator to the upper chair assembly. Since I'm only using two actuators, each one controls its own axis. The motor in the front moves the chair in the pitch axis, whereas the motor on the side controls the roll axis. Although these motors control the actual movement of the chair, most of the weight is actually supported by a universal joint. This makes it much easier for the actuators to move and allows them to move much faster. To actually fly a plane with this, I needed some controls. In this case, a joystick and a throttle. I could just buy these, but they can be a little pricey, so I decided to make my own. I found a model of these A10 style controls online, and then resin printed it on my Elgu Jupiter, which is just a giant resin 3D printer. Printing these in resin works great, because they don't need to be structural parts, and the small layer lines make it really comfortable to use. After everything was printed, I added some buttons and switches, which are mostly just for aesthetics, but can definitely be mapped to different things in the future. And then to finish everything up, I printed these plates, which cover up all the electronics. Closing everything up with some screws meant that this thing is ready for some finish. And at this point, we were only like 10 days away from Flight Fest, so I needed to be quick. I rounded over some of the sharp edges and then did the minimal amount of sanding possible. Sanding is literally my least favorite thing to do. Adding some paint to this contraption definitely made it look a little less homemade. And honestly, I think it's starting to look pretty cool. After the paint was dry, I could do the final installation of electronics. A lot of the work for this project was actually just the electronics and the software. And honestly, it's a bit of a chaotic mess. I know some people will be interested in this, so I'm gonna quickly speed run through how this works. The plane runs an RG Pilot flight controller which transmits telemetry data with this 900 megahertz radio. These data packets are received by the same radio on the ground and then are shown using Q ground control on a laptop. The telemetry packets are also forwarded to an internal UDP port where a Python script can read them and turn them into position commands for the chair. Those position commands are then sent over serial to a microcontroller. The microcontroller converts the position demands into step and direction signals for the actuators. This allows us to actually move the chair correctly but we also need to be able to control the plane. The joystick and throttle both have potentiometers, which are read by a different microcontroller. The position of both the joystick and the throttle are then converted to a PPM signal, which goes into an ELRS transmitter as a trainer signal. Using the buddy box mode, the person with the transmitter can change whether they have control of the plane or if they want to hand off control to whoever is in the chair. This system has a lot of things talking to each other and they all have to work perfectly to keep the plane in the air. So will it work? There's only one way to find out. To test this out, I fitted all the telemetry hardware as well as an FPV system to this plane. I then had my very lovely girlfriend try to launch this, but I definitely needed some more up trim because it just immediately nosedived. 
However, by just jamming the throttle and just skidding it along the ground till it took off, I was able to get it in the air. We're gonna try to put into a loiter here, see if the GPS works. Okay, it wants to go very fast, but it is going in a circle, so that's, that's something. It is loitering, so we're gonna get in the chair and then, oh, I need the FPV goggles. I need the FPV goggles, hold on. It's chaos, it's chaos. The thing is zooming. All right, here we go. Switching back to fly-by-wire, switching over to trainer mode. Oh my God, I have control of the plane. I'm gonna try to come down in altitude. Oh, this feels so cool. This might make me sick. <laughs> All right, here we go, low pass. Coming in steep. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually pretty immersive. It's also pretty dark out because we're flying in the evening, so the FPV is a little hard to see. But I can very clearly fly it and I feel like I'm in the plane, to be honest. <laughs> Pull up. That's incredible. All right, one more low pass. And then we'll call it a day. Or do I try to land it in the chair? Is that a bad idea? All right, I'm gonna try to land it. <laughs> Without seeing the plane, it's kind of hard to gauge how fast you're going. So that's definitely makes this challenging. But overall, I definitely feel in control. So that's something. Oh God, it's sketchy. And we're down. Telemetry lost. That works so well. <laughs> I was not expecting it to go that well. That's awesome. So when we got to Flight Fest, the first thing we did was reassemble the chair. It breaks down into just a couple large pieces, so this wasn't too hard. There was also tons of people around that volunteered to help us out, which was really awesome. After booting up my laptop to check a few things and then plugging in the electronics, everything should be ready to go. As you can see, the chair is following the movements of the plane, which is exactly what we want. At the last minute, I did add an extra mode which allows the person in the chair to control the chair's movements with just the joystick. And this proved to be actually really useful for demos. All right, so let's see what other people think. First up is a good friend of mine, Nick Ream. All right, I'm here with Nick Ream, Mr. Dream Flight himself. Uh, What's up? So he's gonna try to fly this thing and we'll see how he does. Uh, I'm very scared. I have no idea how this is gonna go. I'll let you try it out here first. Oh. All right, if you move oh. the stick. Ground sim mode. Yeah. You'll see oh my pitches God. and rolls. Oh my gosh. Now, Nick was definitely a little apprehensive about how this was gonna go. This is so scary. But at some point, we just had to try it out. So we went ahead and launched a plane. There we go. We're up, oh, boys. Okay, we're, we're up. flying. We're up. There is a stiff breeze. Oh, are you flying into the wind right now? Yes. I will uh, turn us around, and then I will give you control, Mr. Reem. All right. All right. You're in steady level flight. Okay. And you have the stick. I am in control. How's it feel? Whoa, this is, whoa. That's so weird, okay. Do a right hand turn. There it is, very nicely done. Okay, going into the sun, it's a little hard to see. Let me know when I should turn. You're good. You're going straight, Whoa, keep going I'm straight. Like, how's my altitude? You're dropping, a little more power. Beautiful, you're doing it. Once we were in the air, everything worked surprisingly well. And after he got used to the feeling of the chair, he was able to control it very comfortably and fly it around the field. The other fun thing about this chair is it's really great for spectators to watch. I had the FPV feed pulled up on a laptop so everyone could see what Nick sees as well as the telemetry data. And they could also give him some encouragement. Oh yeah, Coming let's to go, Nicky! This is nuts, that's so wild, oh my God. We also noticed that the plane likes to turn right a lot more than it likes to turn left. I think this is because the rudder was out of trim. So the next time I fly this plane, I should probably fix that. 
My favorite part about this chair is the fact that a lot of the people that tried it have been flying RC planes for over 10 years. But you could tell by their reactions that this was just a totally new feeling and everyone thought it was awesome. So maybe this type of setup is something that'll become more common. Who knows? How, what's your what's your review, Nick? Uh, you this this gets a 10 out of 10. This is like next level. I am I am immersed. I am immersed. I, am immersed. I have been immersed into this. <laughs> I am so immersed. Now Nick was definitely getting good at flying this thing, but before he got too motion sick, I wanted to give somebody else a try. Luckily, Peter Strepel was also at this event, and he was busy building this monstrosity of a plane that has like 15 wings. But I pulled him away from that really quickly so he could try flying this. So using the buddy box system, I took back control of the plane and let them switch spots in the seat. I'll be your backup. Yeah, thank you so much. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, bro. Harness. Yeah, strap it. You're gonna need it. With Peter in the chair, I could hand control back to him and see what he thinks. Do I have it? No. When are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All you. Whoa, <laughs> dude, this is nuts. Left turn. Oh, it's yeah, really it's... sluggish going left. Turn left. Okay, we're going right. Oh, the Getting V is so. The, it's over the trees. Right, I'm here. turning it back. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> I want this, but I want to do a boat. <laughs> On a scale one to ten, how immersed are you? Uh, I'm a, I'm pretty pretty lost in the sauce. All right, I'm just gonna turn right. We're going right. Go. The banking action is hilarious. Like a little how it leans. If you want to bring it in for a landing in the corn, and go all for right, it. I'm gonna land it. Well, I'm, a, I'm a, I might redo my approach. All right, on, I'm gonna turn around. Reapproaching. I think All right, I got throw back and off throttle, turning uh, base to final. All right, runway's in sight. Landing right there. Landing. I had, see, I had Landing. the corn. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> we're down. You just didn't put it down. It flies funny. <laughs> I have a job, dude. Insane. That's awesome. Thank you. Where's the crash? It's supposed Where's to take more. <laughs> Excellent job. How is the lane? Did it look pretty bad? No, no. I just like hit the corn and <laughs> did one of these. I saw that. Now, while building this motion chair, I've actually been working with the flight test guys the entire time. And it's been a little bit of a collaboration. So while I was at Flight Fest, they also tried it out. Their reactions to feeling the true motions of an RC plane were awesome. And for Josh's full reaction, make sure you check out the video on their channel. Towards the end of the weekend, Stefan from Flight Test also tried out the chair, and he was going to fly it in combat. Combat is an event pretty much only done at Flight Fest, where there's hundreds of RC planes in the air all at once, and they try to take each other out. Last man standing wins. And this year, the giant RC plane that Peter built, as well as this crazy spinning contraption that Nick built, were also in the event. Stefan's goal was to use the motion simulator to fly this FT Twin Otter, and then use the FPV system to target one of the big planes and take it out. Right as combat began, we launched the RC plane, and then I handed the controls over to Stefan. Oh my gosh. All right. We're in the air, Stefan. We're in the air, dude. I see it, bro. You want control? I'll bring you around and give you control. All right. Oh man. I can't see anything. Oh, come on back. I'm, I'm out. I'm on off. I'm off. I'm off. Are right, you over the trees, dude? So far, over oh, the trees. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dude, I landed in a tree. Oh my. Oh my god, dude. I was going in. I was good, and then we just spiraled and I, my mouth hurts. Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm in the tallest tree, it, so far away. It is so far out there. I can't even. I don't know where I'm at. I felt like I was going down in a real airplane. Now, while we were doing this, we had a lot of radio issues, and that almost took these planes down a couple different times. However, this instance, I think, is actually from stalling the plane. I can't reiterate enough how different flying in this chair feels from just flying with a normal transmitter. Your instinct is just to pull back on the stick and you have no frame of reference for how fast you're going. This makes it super easy to stall planes. Now luckily, even though this plane was way off in a tree, we were still getting telemetry data from it. This meant we had the GPS coordinates of the plane and also the elevation said zero feet, so very likely it was on the ground. And luckily, one of the volunteers offered to give us a ride on a golf cart. We're going to recover the plane, hopefully. Fingers crossed. It says it's at zero feet, so it might be on the ground, hopefully. If not, it might be the tree's plane now. I totally forget this guy's name, which I feel really bad about, but he was awesome, and huge shout out to him. 
It was like 95 degrees out and he really saved us by like driving us into the woods with this golf cart. We're exploring the capabilities of this golf cart. Right. In theory, it should be like right in this area. I'll try to spin the motors up. Everybody listen. Oh wait, I hear it beeping. We're gonna find this thing. Poison ivies for the week. All right, we're hunting for it in the woods. I hear it. Oh, there it is. There it is. On the ground. Honestly, almost entirely in one piece. Dude, look at that. Safe and sound. She might even fly again. There's thorns everywhere. We got it. <laughs> Honestly, very little damage. I, uh, I am pleasantly surprised. After the plane was recovered, we did a little bit more flying off camera and then checked out some of the other awesome builds that were going on. Nick built this giant spinning contraption, which was just unbelievable to see in person. So definitely check out his channel. There was a guy named Carl and a guy named Merv, who I'd never even met before, but they were awesome and gave us a helping hand all weekend. Going forward, I'd really like to get more people in this chair to test it out, because it's genuinely a really cool experience. So let me know what you want to see next. There's no reason we couldn't hook this thing up to a boat or an RC car or something like that. So let me know what you guys think would be cool. Make sure you subscribe for more projects like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.